boys and girls. I've got a story to tell you. It's all about. And it's about Jesus. Woo. Woo. And so, it's that time of year where we celebrate Christmas Day. And I want to tell people that don't understand what it's all about. <laughs> Before I start, I just want to remind you that we've got a healing table here. We've got Richard and Anne sitting there, mighty warriors. They're ready to pray for healing for you. And God is the healer. He said, I am the Lord who healeth thee. So if you need healing, just go there and they're ready to pray with you. <coughs> and so, at Christmas we're celebrating the birth of Jesus. And so the importance of this is the purpose, who Jesus is, what he was born and, and uh, what he was led to do. And so very important you know this and I'm going to read from the, the actual scripture so that you will know what it's all about. I just grabbed my glasses again. <laughs> And so I'm reading from Matthew 1.20. And it's talking about the birth of Jesus. So it says, But after um, he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. But I'll go before this, and I'll read you right from the beginning of this chapter. It says, it's in... Uh, Verse 18, it says, This is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she found that she was to be with child through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, a righteous man, and did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and says, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son and you are to give him the name Jesus because he will save his people from sin. And all this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet, the virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. So it's saying that Jesus is God with us. <coughs> when Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife, but he had no union with her until she gave birth as to a son, and he, he gave him the name Jesus. So what a wonderful thing, eh? Amen. And so it's very important to follow this up with other readings in the Bible. The, the Gospels are the first four books in the New Testament, and they're about the life and times of Jesus. And they're recorded with many insights about salvation in the Old Testament and the New Testament times. So the personal testimonies of, of Jesus was about the kingdom of God. And this was revealed through the many things that Jesus told us. So we didn't know about these things until he taught about them. And so he made it very clear about the kingdom of God and how to enter into the kingdom. And so the information he gave us was about salvation, 
forgiveness, spirituality, and finally, empowerment of the Holy Spirit after he was gone. So, in fact, the book of Acts is the book of the Acts of the Holy Spirit. And so, every Christian needs to read the book of Acts because there's things in there that they generally don't teach you in the churches, particularly the Anglican church, because they don't believe in miracles for today, but it talks about miracles all the time. And so, the valuable teaching you get from the book of Acts is teaching on the how miracles are wrought in the name of Jesus by the Holy Spirit. And so the, all these wonderful stories is about the church and how it grew. And every Bible st student should read the book of Acts diligently to discover the mind of God for us. And so we need to celebrate Christmas. It's a wonderful time. Uh, but don't focus on the wrong thing. The right thing to focus on is the blessings of God. Now, I want to tell you what the gospel is all about. The gospel is really about sin in the world and how to deal with it. Because with, if you've got sin in your life when you die, you can't go to heaven. It's as simple as that. You can say what you like, but the Bible says clearly that's what you need to do. Because that's why... Uh, Adam and Eve were turfed out of the Garden of Eden because sin separates us from God. That's the definition of sin. And so you need to get rid of that sin. That sin that occurred in the Garden is a generation curse. And that can only come, uh, only be delivered from you by God. But you need to repent. The Bible says God is faithful to forgive if you repent. He will deliver you from all unrighteousness. So there's your promise, is you need to repent. What repent means is turning away from your way to God's way. So that's what you need to do. Also what the gospel tells us is that God loves us. Very important to know this because the Bible says this, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, and whomsoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. So that's a wonderful thing to know that Jesus, he was, he was flesh, he came in the flesh, but he was also God. He was fully man and fully God when he came on earth. And the purpose of his coming to earth was to take upon himself our sins. So when he was crucified, he was an innocent man. The devil did it, and so that gave God the opportunity to override uh, what the devil had taken from Adam by deceit and that was the power, God power, that Adam had. Now we have it through faith. If we believe that Jesus Christ did the work on the cross for the forgiveness of our sin, then we'll be saved. It says that if we confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in our heart that God raised him from the grave, then we'll be saved. But there's one thing further I wanted to say to you, and uh, I struck this on Friday night. Uh, I had um, a, a, a Chinese group. They prayed the prayer, but they didn't receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. They refused. But it's very important to know that's a great error. It's better not to repent at all. Uh, otherwise, it, the Bible says this. It's in, uh, in Matthew 12, 43, 45. It says, when an evil spirit comes out of a man, it wanders around in dry places looking for a place to rest. And when it can't find anywhere, it says to itself, I'll return. He returns and finds the house swept clean and put in order takes with him seven other uh, spirits more evil than himself. So the condition of that man is worse at the end than what it was at the beginning. So be sure, that's why we minister in the streets, because it stops people. We generally don't have that problem, but occasionally there's a demonic presence here uh, that we, we try to address, but not always it happens. But that's when people walk away 
without receiving. And you must receive the Holy Spirit if you repent. So don't worry. Uh, God is a, a wonderful God, a loving God, and He loves us all. So thank you very much. Yep.